Hey, welcome back. Hi, how are you? I'm good. For new viewers, this is my good friend, Ann Frost, from the podcast, I Thought I Knew How. Hello. People are new. They don't know. I was once yeah, uh, sometimes. gently reminded that I should introduce myself instead of just starting off, <laughs> blah, 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 because <laughs> I guess I just assume that we have this community and everyone knows who we are. Yeah. But no, but we get newcomers. We do. Go. And I'm so thankful for that. So, yay. Yeah. No, I have to do the same. I have it actually written into my podcast script. I just copy and paste it over every time, like my little intro section. That's right. Because I'm you're really smart famous. enough that you do a script and you don't just ramble along like I do. I Well, it's just me. So like most of the time, it's just me. So there's not the back and forth, you know, and yeah. I would just ramble. It, yeah, ramble would is a good word. for. Yeah, that's how. what I do. And when it is just me, like, yeah. I, just, I mean, I don't actually write out a script. I'll have like a little piece of paper with an outline. So I kind of don't forget to bring up something or say something. But I don't yeah. really actually have a script script. Wow. Yeah. There's so much cat hair on me. I can even see it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh so you've been busy you have a lot coming up so that's yeah. why we yes. I reached out and said hey do you want to do a podcast because there's a lot of things coming up for both of us that we want to tell you all about yes yeah how do you want to do this do you want to like take turns with stuff stuff we've done stuff yes. we are going to do yes and since people have short attention spans and I have a time sensitive event I I'm going to go first Real quick. Okay. So okay. if people watched our vlog in last time we got together last month, mm -hmm. I was talking about an event that I have coming up this weekend, actually, in just a few days, which is the Out of the Darkness Walk, and it's to raise awareness for suicide prevention. And so as yeah. an effort to for a fundraiser for that, I've knitted this little afghan or a throw size thing. Um and people that I'm going to raffle off and the drawing will be Sunday. And so I'm knitting the border. Ooh. I do have it put together now, but I'm knitting the border today. So let me turn this around so people can see if you want to bid on this. Uh, I'll put the link down below. Not bid. It's not an auction. Make a donation for a chance to win. It's a raffle. Not a, what am I saying? It's a raffle. It's a raffle. So is that, that's this. That's this Sunday coming up. Yes. April 14th. 14th? Yes. Okay. So the actual out of the darkness walk event that I'm attending at the University of Wyoming is happening on Saturday. And so this is a oh, okay. this is a fundraiser for that. So I'll do the drawing on Sunday, the 14th, probably sometime in the evening. People can still donate, uh, but that's when I thought right. I would do the drawing. So okay. each each increment of ten dollars donation straight to the AFSP, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, gets you one entry. Nice. So you can enter for as little as 10 bucks, or you can buy, yeah. you know, you can donate 50 bucks and get five entries. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so then that gives you a chance to win. This is the, this is the Radvent throw pattern by Amba O'Brien. Right. Beautiful. And you can see where it kind of goes from this darker color across the center to darker. So I had a vote, I had a vote on my Patreon page about mixing it up or doing a fade. And so this is what I came up with, sort of sort of a gradual fade kind of thing. So you can fade see across. Nice. It's throw size. Each one of these blocks is about 10 inches, so it's 4 by 6. Okay. Yeah. So it's like nice. 40, with the border, it'll be 44-ish inches by 62-ish, hmm, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So I yeah. have it all assembled now, and I just need to weave in some ends and knit the border. So the I'll border photograph excellent. hopefully tomorrow if it's not kind of rainy. But hopefully I'll get the border done this afternoon and this evening. Because there's baseball yeah. to watch. <laughs> nice. So we'll talk more about baseball in a little yes, while too. The links down below if you would like a chance to win. Yay. Do okay. It. Do That's it. Time, time sensitive. So I just want to throw that out there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have a time sensitive thing too. So we can hit our time sensitive things first. Yeah. So the Shetland Hogmanay box. I know a lot of people know me 
you know, people watching your channel know me from the Wooly Winter Countdown that we do every year. Huh? Well, the the box for this year is going live this Saturday. For pre-order. So this year for pre-order. Would you say? For pre-order, yes. So um, eh? I'm just putting my phone on silent because I forgot to, and it just made a noise. You're like, uh, <laughs> what? Um, it is going, man. It's going. Anyway. <laughs> um, so this year's box, we have Terry Laura is coming back to do the design for us again, which I'm very excited about. And I'm super excited about it because like maybe two hours ago, she sent me a photo of the finished pattern like the finished thing. thing. And so I'm like, Ooh. and I'm very, I'm very happy with it. And she has plans to um, offer different customizations. So you don't have to end up with one that's exactly like everyone else in the box. You'll have some options that you can work in. Mm -hmm. um, it's a gender neutral winter wearable accessory. Oh, it's made. It is made with the yarn from five of the wool producers there in Shetland. So we have Uradale Yarns, Aster U, Laxdale Yarn, Silly Sheep Company, or Silly Sheep Fiber Company, and Jamesons of Shetland are all included this year. It's four 25 gram balls from each of those makers for a wow. total. Now, this isn't going to make sense, right? Because the math doesn't work out. There's 24 total balls. But that's because one of those producers is going to have two sets of colors oh, in the okay. boxes. Okay. And okay. I'm not going to tell you which. Um, well, yeah. And then we have different inclusions by some of the crafters and makers up there. Mm -hmm. And some of them are, have been in the box before, but they're bringing new goods. And Prizes. some of them are new people. So, yeah, so Mela is going to be included before, and she's done, like, lip balm for us before. She's got a new thing that will be in the box. Uh, Paperwork Furniture is going to be represented in the box again. Yay. Uh, Up House Crafts is another one. They did, um, they did a coaster the first year. Okay. And I've, like, in, I just forgot what they did last year. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> it just went poof. I'll remember at 3 a.m. Um, <laughs> there is an item from Donna Smith Studio. Nice. Now, I know a lot of people know Donna Smith as a yarn producer herself. It's not her yarn, but she does have a collection of items that she also has. And it's cool. going to be one of those. Things. Mackenzie's Farm Market, uh, Pinkfish Shetland, who makes like little tourists like really nice, cute touristy things. You actually okay. want to buy little souvenirs. And a company called Glance and Glass that makes uh, fused glass art. Ooh. So all of that is going to be in the box this year. It will ship to your home mm -hmm. mid-October. Uh, yeah. This year's price is $270 US okay. dollars. That includes the shipping. Wow. So it doesn't matter where you live in the world. It is $270. Wow. And Someone got a little grumpy with me last year about that. And, but really the difference between first of all, shipping it from the U S to the U S versus shipping it from the UK to the U S there's no difference. If okay. anything, it's actually a little cheaper. The postal system is messed up right now with the pricing. Um, but even shipping within the UK to a foreign address, like the difference is so minimal that I was just like, we're just going to make it easy. Everyone pays the same amount. And you know, all. there's always someone that's grumpy, whatever. You can't please everybody. There's all always the someone that's grumpy. I'm sorry. You're grumpy. I'm sorry. They just need to but knit this more. This just makes it it's fine. so much easier to just be everybody. It's this much and I that's will get it to it you and it will be great. So, great. and then of course, Jan and I, we get together. Every for day. December, every morning of December. And we have a little chat like this and we open our packages for the day so you can open them with me. You want to talk Ooh, about one thing. Things. Exactly. One thing that we're changing about the box this year oh. is instead of giving you the pattern at the end, once you have the first set of yarn, I'm going to give you a simplified version of the pattern. So you won't 
be spoiled about the colors that are coming up in the box. But if you want to be able to start knitting it early in the month, you will get a version of the pattern that will allow you to start knitting it. So kind and of like a mystery point, knit along, like a mystery knit along where yes. you get step one, like you get pieces and you can keep going. Oh. But you, I mean, you'll see the whole, the whole pattern, like the whole fair isle pattern to it. You will okay. see that. Okay. You won't see the remaining colors. So how that all works together. Well, that's cool we'll though. Talk about, we'll talk about like, some of your customization options at that point too so you know no. as you start knitting it but but we're not going to show you the finished item until the last day and you'll get a color copy of the pattern and a qr code to download a digital version hmm you know i haven't decided what i'm gonna do for advent this year or countdown you know i haven't decided yet i saw you were talking about that on your facebook group the other day and it i mean like i am gonna get the I am going to do the socks. I think I think this is the funnest option myself. I am going to do that. Oh, yeah. I hope socks. you get the socks. The stripy oh, I socks. I, I want to I'm see how that works out again. I'm going to do the socks again just because that was like low pressure for me. And it was a lot of fun to see what color came next. And it's busy because right. like I have to, you know, edit our podcast every day and upload. And it's a lot. Yeah. And it's the holidays. So that's yeah. low pressure. But and really we talk so much you can pretty much do the knitting while we're talking at the same time i have done that before <laughs> I have. And speaking there's been times when because we record ahead so there's been times you know just because of like oh we're going to be busy this day whatever so we'll sometimes do two episodes <laughs> and i'm like yeah we'll be knitting stripe while we're talking <laughs> yeah it's true well and right now Right now I'm knitting just back and forth. It's an easy section here on our, our Mahina cardigan knit along. It looks so pretty. I wish I had had the time to join in this on this one because it's such a nice, this is the simple neckline. looking, but, yeah. but pretty. Yeah. So this is the beginning. We ca had the cast on video came out this week. So nice. I'm just working through the increases right now and. I mean, obviously the increases you can see, but that'll block out, you know, this yarn blooms yeah. wonderfully. So nice. What fun. are you knitting it with? It's Barocco Renew mm. is what it's called. And it is a, let me find one here. I don't know where it is. Huh? Cause I don't have the label. Oh, maybe I do. Here's my, I thought I had, oh, here we go. Here we go. It is 35% viscose, which is plant fiber, 30% yeah. wool, 30% nylon, and 5% cashmere. Nice. It is nice. nice. And the color, my so color. All, is are all the fibers recycled? I saw on the thing it said it was recycled yes, fibers. This, that are oh, all and or, or sustainable as in plant fibers. So the wool is probably virgin wool then. Probably. And this is the color called tortoise. So I'm in a green nice. phase. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my purple, but I'm in a green phase of my life at the moment. Well, your your uh, blanket that you're working on, your Afghan, yeah. is a lot of greens. Yeah. It's like getting Loving into it. your head, man. Loving it. I have, uh, I have a couple of things on my needles and I'm a little sad because I can't knit on either of them while we're talking because we're in. I mean, complicated points ah, of them. Okay. Okay. So but I'll show one. We talked about this one last time. Ooh, yeah. This is the glittering shawl. Glitter. Sorry. What is it called again, Jana? Glittering. Snowscape shawl. Snowscape. By a You can point. see I did not go. I did not embrace the snowscape aspect of it. Mine's like a muddy cliff side. It's maybe and, dirty uh, snow. It's okay. It's what? It's dirty snow. Which, it's dirty snow. It's, it's fine. Okay. It's what it's the pile that the plow leaves and like all the grit has coated it as the snow melted down. And it's windy. No, it's because um I knit I'm knitting it with Noro instead of like sock yarn, whatever. And I was up here, I was up here in this lace portion last time, and now I'm down doing yeah. this. I think I have one more section after this, and then I can start the edging. That's a lot. But, um yeah. 
So this, this was the first color up here. And then it was so funny because the second color is a blend of the first color and brown. So this was my first color, yeah. Nice. And then here at this point, you start alternating between the first color and your next color. Yeah. But because this color is a blend yeah. of this color and brown, so I was like alternating, but it was also still sort of like a lot more of this color than it It looks been. great. I think it looks really good. Anyway. Yeah. Thank you. And then the edging will be like that brown color. Have you enjoyed so the three pattern? color version? This is the brown. That will be the edging. Whoops, whoops, like that. Have you enjoyed the pattern? Um, I have. I have. Said with some it's, uh, No, it's just I don't know. I think I think that um for for a really long time I didn't do color work knitting. I used to do like lace or cables or things like this, you yeah. know, yeah. stitch pattern knitting, like yeah. whatever. And I really enjoyed that. And then I got into the color work knitting, I don't know, five five-ish years ago yeah and uh at this point like doing this I'm kind of like okay that's fine <laughs> can I get back to my color work please <laughs> <laughs> so you're in a phase of your life and that's fine I'm in a phase your knitting journey yeah that's all right yeah but I'm looking I I do like this and I am looking forward to wearing it when it comes off it's my like wise woman living in the woods shawl it's how I describe it because it's so like <laughs> organic and everything. Um it looks cozy. But yeah, I do have I do have color work on my needles. I'm trying to pull it out very carefully because it's an alpaca blend and so it makes me nervous because it's slippery. Ah. Uh but this is uh the sea pink top from oh it's so slippery. I have it on metal needles too, which doesn't help. It's the sea pink top from issue three of the Journal of Scottish Yarn. Okay. And it's knit in the Eolair yarn that was recommended. Oh, that's so that's lovely. So the versions in the magazine have a gray background and then either pinks or blues. Okay. Um, but Eolair had these lovely golds. And I'm so obsessed with the whole brown and yellow thing right now. Um, it's kind of a joke would, as I'm hosting the tour, been hosting the tours in Shetland in the last couple of years, if there's a brown and yellow sweater in the gift shop, when we go somewhere, like I sit back and let people have a chance, like you have a chance to try it on and get it, but, <laughs> but you're going, if you don't take that chance, I'm coming in and it's going home <laughs> with me. So. so this one's mine. And I really like it cause it's a short sleeve sweater okay. uh which is good for scotland it's good for scotland because even when it's sunny it's sometimes cold <laughs> so you get the blend the blend of the two so i'm just starting the flowers and uh, yeah i've been doing a lot of uh playing around with the pattern for this one as i go yeah um as far as like i added short rows for the bust and uh the sleeves for my size, the sleeves, you were only supposed to do like two rounds before you joined it all up. And I did five just to give like a little bit more length. More of a sleeve. And yeah. I plan, I plan to one thing I've noticed, and it happens with this pattern, I see it with a lot of patterns. As designers are sizing up, they continually size up the size of the neck hole. No. Oh. So if you're in a larger size, you end up with like a neck hole really wide. And it's yeah. like that, that sizing, like there's proportions for everything, but that proportion doesn't need to grow as much as other proportions do. Yeah. Because so, I'm obviously if I gain weight, my stomach and my gut area gets larger than my neck. <laughs> yeah. My neck doesn't put on, some people do, some people right, get right. like wider necks and right. that's fine. The directions are there for them, but I think I'm doing the size, the fifth size. Okay. And I'm planning on doing the instructions for the second size to close okay. it up. Okay. For the next um, one. Okay. So I'll just, I'll just follow that when I get to that point. So playing around, having a good time. We're having a good time. 
That's awesome. So that's my, that's my on the needle stuff. I'm doing my sweater. Yeah. Because I'm, I vid- love that sweater. I know. Cause I'm videoing. So I have to like keep ahead. Right. Yeah. And I have yeah, a vacation sure. coming. I have a vacation coming up at the end of the month. So I need to get ahead. Um, Where are, you, are you going walking with your daughter? Hiking with your daughter? No, that was going to be later. That's in May. Um, okay. No, this is a vacation. Just my husband and I, which hasn't happened in decade, Ooh. about a decade. So, and we're going, wow. camp, of course, we bought one of these giant canvas wall, kind of outfitter sort of tents that has a little wood stove. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Because, you know, it's still cold. I think South Dakota got about 10 inches of snow last week. Oh my goodness. So today, I mean, it's big wet spring snow, you know, but still nonetheless cold enough to have that happen. I think today's in the, yeah. today's like in the forties. We, we got some freezy rain last week. It didn't dump on us like that, but, but yeah, it's, it's nice to have the little tiny yeah. hot. We have a hot tent. Yeah. <laughs> so and I'm freeze, you know, I'm freeze drying our meals. So that's nice. That'll make yeah. it easier. Nice. So, but I don't think I told I Will that. I said it might ha- it might kind of be a working vacation. He just wants to go play golf. So there you go. I'll do some day hiking. He'll go off and play golf. If I need to have like I might be video if I'm not done, I'll have to video outside at the camp table and then like go to the library wherever we are and upload. Yeah, and upload, yeah. And oh, maybe, that'll be fun. That'll yeah. make for fun videos. Maybe I will. Depends on how far I yeah. get. <laughs> no, I love that. He just wants to. That's go great. Play. He just got new clubs. Yeah. Cool. Adam and I have done that before, where you know we're just like we're gonna go somewhere, but you know I know you have your stuff you got to get done. I got stuff to get done, but we're gonna do stuff in a different place and have and have fun for part of the day. You know. Yeah. Just, but yeah. otherwise just really just be somewhere else for a little while that's sometimes yeah. just really nice and eat camp yeah. out food and you know exactly sleep next to a wood stove with my little sleep you know that's my, right my doggy and yeah <laughs> and, you know will can sleep over there <laughs> stop me and the dog you go <laughs> You do your thing. Yeah. Hey, could you see the eclipse at all where you were or were you like way far away? Oh yeah. Way far away. Yeah. yeah. I figured you probably were. Too Wyoming was away. nowhere near any of that. We had our thing. And whenever it was 2017, we had, we had our thing then. Yeah. Yeah. Yours will be semi close for the, what is the next one? 2044. They were saying there was one that's going to be in like the Dakotas and Montana, but that's still pretty far. Well, no, Montana is directly north of Wyoming. Yeah, but it's like over, like up and over by the Dakota. Well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it won't be so bad. South Dakota is adjacent to Wyoming. It's so funny to me. As we, <laughs> so we we drove to totality. We were far away. We're We're in Connecticut and the nearest place to us was up in northern Vermont. And there's a highway called the 91 that we can get on 10 minutes from here and it would take us right to the totality. Okay. So three normal driving three and a half hours. Okay. Shouldn't be a problem. Not it took us five. Yeah. It took us five. We got there 15 minutes before it hit full totality. Um, as we were driving, it was so crazy, Jenna, as we were driving, we kept passing so many people who had pulled over and we'd see people running to the, running to the, um, the woods because they had to pee. They couldn't get off. The, <laughs> the traffic was so bad. Another mile, someone else would be running off to the woods to pee. I mean, this is Northern Vermont. There's not the, the spacing is quite long between and but there's no one around to see you pee you'll be fine so and then um when it got to be maybe like a half hour before the full full eclipse um as we we got to a more populated area and as we would pass the off ramps and and the on ramps people had just pulled up and it was bumper to bumper on those off ramps and on ramps. And people were sort of like up on the berms. They were like, we went far enough. This is where we're watching from. 
So we decided there's one fairly big town that was going to be in the totality. And we decided to go to the next smaller town after it because we figured more people would get off in the big town. We, As we were approaching, we looked off to the side of the road, the side of the highway, and we could see there was like a medical center with a big parking lot. Yeah. And there were only about 10 cars and wow. people had already set up. And so we we're like, well, let's try and get there. Okay. So as we got off, there was a huge line of cars at the exit to turn right. And we turned left and went back about a mile and and parked there and got out of our car and we had our little chairs, whatever. And we sat there and we watched the eclipse. And as we were leaving, one of the ladies who works in the medical center came over and we chatted with her for a little bit. And we went and had pizza like on on the way but to, between we were like well let's just stop we'll let some of the traffic clear we'll get pizza and then adam had to do some emails and stuff for work yeah well as we were eating pizza which it was smart to stop because we were like the third table in and by the time we left it was slammed oh. um and uh so as we were eating pizza adam had ways open and it was telling us our estimated time to get home. And it just kept getting longer and longer. Like when we first sat down, it was saying four hours and it went to five and five and a half, 545. Ooh. And it just kept getting longer and longer. So we were like, okay. So we went, we finished, we went and found some more Wi Fi. And Adam just like finished his work for the day. And it still just kept getting longer and longer and longer. And in the end, it took us seven hours to get home we averaged about 35 miles an hour on the highway so did you have to stop and run into the woods we did not so we took care of that before we got on the road still seven and then hours. yeah seven hours we stopped once to try and get so we stopped about 100 miles into the drive there's another big city and we stopped we pulled off we figured okay we'll go get a mcdonald's right for I wasn't even hungry. We just, we had pizza like three hours before, two hours before, but we were like, we'll just stop, get sodas, whatever. The McDonald's had the double drive through. That was both of them out to the street. The foyer or the, you know, the entry, whatever was just packed with people standing there. And there were people in their cars doing mobile ordering. So we were like, okay, um, we're not going to do this. So we went by a few other places and they were all slammed. So we stopped at a gas station and got, um, our oldest was with us. We got them uh, Pop-Tarts <laughs> gas station and uh, got sodas. And we drove Yeah. until we drove another three hours to get to my hometown area in Massachusetts, pulled off and fueled up. And then from there, it was just an hour. It was like an hour and 15. It's usually an hour. So it wasn't so bad after that point. But man, it was seriously like in the dark, two lines of traffic moving 35 miles an hour. Yeah, that's how it was here in 2017. And, you know, Wyoming, I mean, we're not, we don't have the population and the resources and the, you know, stores and restaurants to deal with that kind of thing. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. And can you, Yeah, you definitely, we definitely got the sense in the pizza restaurant that they were just sort of like, ah, go away. Everyone just go away. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And can you imagine like my husband works for the department of transportation. Can you imagine the litter pickup that's going to happen later? It was all, Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And we saw on the way, on the way back. Yeah. Yeah. The way back was not so bad as far as accidents, but on the way up, there were so many accidents. Like people were just, cause it was really stop and go and people look down at their phone and they think that they, you know, we're moving up and they don't look up in time and, and they're just people stupid. had driven off the highway and were like the, yeah. you know, the highway there, it's like the highway and then it's down. Cause they've had to level it, you know? Yeah. So people end up like, down on a thing and they have to get towed back up onto the road and <laughs> oh it was crazy yeah, it was crazy nightmare. yeah yeah so so it, i was like well we did it <laughs> i yeah and we were nowhere near any of that 
you know, the path of anything. And like I said, we did that in 2017. I mean, it was enjoyable to watch the memes and stuff on social media, Yeah, you know, anyway. Yeah. It's a once in a lifetime thing. And now that I've done it, I'm like, yeah, it's a once in a lifetime thing. Right. I'm okay with it being once in a lifetime. Old it was very be? cool. Let's see. In another 20 years. I mean, we... another 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. So. I did see, I Googled the other, when we were coming down, uh, coming back, I Googled, um, and there are um, eclipse calculators where you can put in your town and it will tell you all the lunar and solar eclipses that you'll get bet- before two, um, 22, 2200. Um, it will tell you all the eclipses that you'll get and the degree to which you'll get it. So if it's like oh. a partial lunar or partial okay. solar yeah, or whatever, like and it'll give you the zip code or time. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's very cool to, because they know they, I mean, it's not like they're guessing at this. This is all very science. mathematical. They know science. how things are going to happen. Science, science, man, science. <laughs> so let's see. People can order back to the Hogmanay box. People can order your box yes. starting Saturday, which will be. Oh, did we not say that part? Did we digress this no, for I think like we 10 did. minutes? I think we did, but I wanted to circle back and make sure. And you recap. Okay. You're going to. I'm circling back to make sure that we verified that people will be able to order your box, okay. pre order the countdown. Yes. Hogmanay, Shetland Hogmanay box Saturday the 13th. Yes. Yes, at noon Eastern, 5 p.m. British time. It's already scheduled to go live. So fingers crossed, nothing happens. It should just go live on its own. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll put be around link. in case anything goes wrong. Thank you very okay. much. It's just store.ithoughtinewhow.com. Okay. Um, I will be around. If you are having problems, you can try reaching out to me. My email is Anne at ithoughtinewhow.com. Anne with an E at ithoughtinewhow.com. Yep. Or like on Instagram, I thought I knew how. Like I, I will be at my computer and for Make that initial work. thing in case anything goes wrong. Right. So right. Just just let me know. Reach yeah. Out. Because if you yeah, don't reach out to Ann, not me, because I'll be at my walk at for the yes. suicide awareness day. Anna will be walking. And make sure that you make the donation if you wanna qualify for the raffle. That's right. That's Increments right. of ten dollars by right. this Sunday. So busy weekend. Busy weekend. It is. It is. We have, there's lots of things coming up. So we do. Yeah. So, yeah. So another thing I have coming up that I want to tell about real quick is our first inaugural Pearl camp. Summer camp. So I never got to sleep over camp. I never got to go to sleep over camp as a kid. So I'm basically recreating this in a knitting way for myself and to share with others because yes. I never got to go to sleep over camp. See, so did you really like never go like not oh. even as a teenager? No, oh, wow. that's my, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. There will be snacks, yeah. knitting and snacks. Yeah. Are you going to tell ghost stories? No, I don't, I don't like that. I'm a wuss. No, I don't do. Uh-uh. Okay. I mean, they can, if okay. you want to no do that, that's stories. fine. I'll go to, to my room and listen to my... Dan is going to bed. I'll go to, to listen decompress. to my happy sleep stories on my Calm app. <laughs> I was going to laugh if you were like, I'm going to go to my room and listen to my true crime podcast. So you guys <laughs> share your ghost stories. <laughs> no, I listen to my Calm app sleep stories. I've never actually heard the end of yeah. any of those, by the way, <laughs> because I'm always out. Right. So Pearl... <laughs> is june 19th which is a wednesday that's okay. when starts. we do people arrive on wednesday in ogden utah people arrive on wednesday and then we have workshops and fun stuff activities planned on thursday friday and then saturday i'm teaching a workshop class at the needlepoint joint my favorite yarn shop in downtown ogden so i'll have information down below we're going to be dyeing mini skeins in my friend Rebecca's backyard, we're going to dye mini skeins and then we're going to knit mandalas. Nice. So it's a very camp activity to do. I know. So, and we'll have shirts and, you know, right. Cause you can't not have nice. a camp t-shirt, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. You have to. Yeah, absolutely. And then you wear it for like, 
you know, six months to a year, proudly in public. And then, and then you have to get the next one, right? Yeah. You get the next one when you go again. And then that one becomes pajama top. Oh, and no, it just I becomes keep wearing like a rotation. Oh, okay. I keep wearing you them. You just all. keep wearing them. I have a rotation. And then you do, like, when you get enough, you start doing like the cut it off and make it a quilt thing. I have a rotation. It, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Right. So Ogden in the <laughs> summer is really fun. So the registration for Pearl Camp is, is that, you know, Wednesday evening, everybody arrives, we have a meet and greet kind of thing, and then we'll have activities Thursday, Friday, and then people can depart on Saturday morning if they want, or they can come to the oh. workshop that I'm teaching at the Needlepoint Joint as an add-on kind of event. They could, people could do that. Bonus, yeah. And, or they go to Farmer's Market. Farmer's Market will be in full swing by then, downtown Ogden. That's fun. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Yeah. So all the information, click the link. Click the link. Click the link. And uh, you yeah. some, you've got summer stuff coming up. I have a lot of stuff coming up. Uh I'm end of this month, while you and your husband, I think, are camping. Uh I will be camping. going to glamping. Well, with a wood stove your... and a mattress, that's glamping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will be going to the Wooly Good Gathering, which nice. is a new wool festival starting in Edinburgh. Nice. And they had a Kickstarter to help fund their first year. Mm -hmm. And I got my box today. Oh, I probably should um, cover up my address. I got my box today from the Kickstarter. So yeah. I thought I would open it and show you. Yeah. Because the they have. They have patterns. I have my little stabber here. Let's see if I can do this without injuring myself. A stabber. This literally came like 30 minutes before I needed to talk to Jana to meet Jana to do this. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to wait. So I have not opened this at all. Um, but they have a, they did a knit pattern and a crochet pattern for okay. shawls oh, for their for first sure. year. Yeah. And, uh, I did the level where I got the yarn for both. Oh. So here's my box. Oh. Nice. No. So let's see what's in here. So this is, this feels like fun stuff. Cool. ASMR. <laughs> That's all the, all the cool kids are doing that now, Jana. You have to hold stuff next to the microphone. And make, hold on. I'll do the tippy tap. It depends what it you is, do that. whether it's good or not you good. Do, yeah. yeah. But I'm sorry, my nails aren't done enough for the tippy taps. They're supposed to be like really pokey and everything. Ooh, okay. So there's a set of stitch markers here that oh. are, let's see. Oh. Let me turn it the right way. Little balls of yarn. And it says Wooly Good Gathering on the back. Oh, that's Try cute. Get it. That's very cute. And then um, these, I think, I think I know what these are. These are like the little sew on leather things, or I don't know. Oh, yeah. Leather or cork. Yeah. When they're like handmade with love, whatever, by whoever. Yeah. Or like Let's a little see. tag. There's a whole. Yeah. So by hand, handmade and woolly good gathering. Oh, cute. One of them's upside down. Uh, <laughs> but that's my fault. Not the theirs. Idea. That's all right. Um, And then there's, oh. There's a little wooden pin for being a Kickstarter supporter. It says, thank you for supporting Kickstarter campaign. And then, oh, a tote bag. That's cool. Nice. Okay, so let's get to the yarn. Yeah, I want to know what kind of yarn it is. Oh, so here's the first one. Okay. Ooh, so this is Eolair. I could tell when I touched it, it's Eolair. It's the yarn I'm doing the uh -huh. sweater out of. And I could tell from the feel. So yeah, this is so this is merino and silk. Lovely. Non-super wash called Sea Glass by Eolair for Woolly Good Gathering. Lovely. That's lovely. And then there's another one. So I think this is for the knits, the knit one. And then this one is for the crochet one. Okay. And this is from the hand dyer Sakami. And this is 
100% Coriadale. Oh. And I don't know. I thought it was solid at first, but it actually has little specks. Can you see little specks? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of tonal. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nice. Gold theme going on there. I do. I am going to have to look. I think they sent a link to the patterns rather than sending the pattern. So I'm going to have to look for that. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I don't have enough yarn or enough projects on my needles. Woo, woo, woo. Got a couple more now. <laughs> nice uh, anyway that's exciting i'm excited to get that i'm excited to get there and go to that oh yeah so that is april 26th and 27th okay. at a place called summer hall in edinburgh if you would like to come along it's friday the friday it's i think it opens at one and then the saturday it has longer hours you will find me in the marketplace. I'm actually hosting a table of goods sent down from different Shetland makers. So if nice. you want to see yarn yarn from uh, Uradale Yarns, Donna Smith is sending some of her yarn. She'll be there at the booth as well. Um, and then Pepperwork Furniture makes um, the sweater blocking boards yep. and glove blockers and sock blockers and nasta pinnas and all those kind of things he's sending a bunch of stuff down and then mela handmade soaps is sending down her knitters balm and a bunch of little sort of treat yourself kind of things as well so those will all be there i'll be there almost the whole time um there's there's like a couple times i'm gonna have a break and and a time to like run around and see everything in the festival myself um, so if I'm not there, just circle around and come back and I'll show up again soon. But I hope you come by and say hello. Um, I'm looking forward to being, I'm I'm actually kind of excited to be at a first year of a festival. Yes. I think that's kind the of. Inaugural fun. one. The inaugural event. Yes. So I'm really looking forward to that. See, that's yeah. the thing. You so can come to the inaugural Pearl Camp and have the t-shirt from the very first year. For your clients. I know we talked about this. We well, I mean you, this. but I also mean the general viewer as oh, a- oh yeah, 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 yeah. You oh. general. Oh. I can't make it this year, but you all should come and uh support Jana and get that t-shirt. Jana, I might need to finagle a t-shirt out of you honorarily. <laughs> you might. <laughs> I, don't know. Like, I mean, no, I, I feel like you, you gotta go. come to the event. You know, I mean, I know. Just say it. I know. I know. I know. It's understandable. I totally understand. So, yeah. So I have that. And then I'm going up. I'll be in Shetland for a month after that. Coming home. Uh, uh, then later this summer, you mentioned baseball. And your local team the Den- my local yes. minor league I know. team. But, so the Colorado Rockies have an affiliate minor league team in Hartford. Yes, called the Hartford Yard Goats. And which I had to Google that what that sense. meant. I had to Google what is a yard goat. Yes. Do you know? It's a goat in your yard. <laughs> Maybe, depending on where you live. <laughs> but back in the day... A yard goat was uh, had to do with the railroad workers in really the railroad okay. yard in Hartford. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure okay, why they, I'm not sure why the name their logo is, is a goat, and it's awesome. And I really want I really want a, a T-shirt cool. or a hat that has the the Day of the Dead one because that's cool. Oh yeah. Well, let me tell you, Bell, because. I am hosting a stitch and pitch event at the Yard Goat Stadium on August 17th. So details about that will come out. Tickets will probably go on sale for that about mid-May. That's my goal right now, to have those tickets selling mid-May. There will be a ticket that you can get just to come to the game. Okay. And there is a ticket you can get where you will also get a swag bag. And the swag bag so far has unicorn wash. It has uh, Clover has sent goods for it. Okay. Um, Knitter, Knitter, Knit Pro, they used to be called Knitter's Pride. Now they're Knit Pro. They've sent something. Uradale Yarn is sending something. Uh, Hilly Vandersloos is sending a pattern. Uh, there'll be a tote bag for it. Like 
it's it's a good I'm I'm putting a few things in from the podcast like it's a good little goodie bag. The price for that is going to be different. That's going to be a more expensive one. Um so sure. but the reason why I'm doing that is you can come with your knit friends and you can all get the swag bags and be happy and have, you know, all have your own thing. But if you're bringing your family or if you're bringing a friend or who doesn't knit or crochet or whatever, they can, you can get a swag bag ticket and they can get like the normal ticket and yeah. not get the what swag bag, you know, yeah. and that's fine. You can have your three kids and your husband and you, and you can get as many swag bags as you want, or you can get one and just, right. they all get the plane ticket. Like it's right. just that trying to make sense. it easier that sure. way for people. So, but okay. So getting back to that though, Jana, I didn't know this when I booked our tickets for the stadium, but they're going to be playing as Los Chivos that night. Oh, really? So they'll be playing with their day, day of the dead, uh, uniforms. So I don't know, Jana, maybe there's a t-shirt exchange in the works here. Just saying. Did you know, did you know that I did? I know. I paid like $30 so that I can stream the yard goats on minor league baseball TV. <laughs> And nice. I watched one yeah. yesterday. Against, so you can uh, watch along with us. I might. You can watch the show with us. Yeah. 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 Because so, yeah, so people... if you're in the Hartford area or if you want to come through, there's a lot of stuff to do in Hartford. I know it's like Hartford, but there's um, Mark Twain's house is here. Harriet Beecher Stowe's house is here. There's an awesome science museum for kids. The Bushnell has amazing shows and stuff. Like there is stuff to do here. And New England in the summer Everyone wants to come in the fall. I love New England in the summer. That is my favorite time to be here is hands down New England in the summer. So come, you know, it's, I'm aiming it towards local people, but if anyone wants to come, you're welcome to come and like hang out for a few days in the area and see the different things. So, so do you August like a, send me like a chamber of commerce link or something that shows all the things to do? Oh yeah, I'll do that. I'll make a note. Like a visitor Things center, they usually have, there. you know, they usually have lists of things. Right. Yeah. And okay. it's not, um, so Hartford is known for insurance. <laughs> so there's a lot of insurance companies in the yeah. area, which means there's a lot, and they do a lot of conferences here. So there's a lot of hotels. So right. it would be easy enough to find a hotel that's close enough to the stadium. And then you can get out and do the other things. And the, there is the Hartford airport is like 15 minutes from downtown. So it's very easy. And there, you know, there's rental cars and it's a very, it's, I, I happen to like where I live. I think it's a cool place to be. There's a great art museum called the Hartford Athenaeum that has, it was like a family that collected all of this art and then donated it. And then they've been adding to it too. So it's like a wow. huge range of um yeah. genres and periods and stuff it's a real it's great that's cool yeah nice and then after yeah. that we're into september and you'll be off to wherever you'll be off yeah, to i'll be back to shetland again right i'll be and i'll actually be in shetland between those two those two trips because i'm going back to host one last week of the mac and our way through shetland tours oh yeah the one that we're i was doing was special... eligible to attend yeah you have to have come on the tours before in order to go on this. It's a sheep to sweater tour where we'll a thing where you start have with shearing. We start with shearing. We learn about grading. We talk about, we learn spinning. We dye. Mm -hmm. we, we don't dye. We dye our yarn. Um, we have classes with Allison Rendell to design our sweater and we go shop with Jeanette Budge and we start start our start our own sweater design while we're there in Shetland and uh finish it up when we come home. So we have Elizabeth Johnston is going to be Elizabeth Johnston will be teaching us spinning and dyeing. Yeah. I mean like it is amazing. That sounds I'm very excited cool. about that tour. So is that tour yeah, full so I'll be there can people and back still sign up for that? that? Can people still no sign that one's full. Okay. Cool. That one's full. There are still there are still some spots in one in the lace weeks. Okay. And there's another tour that uh called Contemporary Crafts. You've heard me mention with the Shetland Hog Mini Box, some of the makers 
up there in Shetland. Right. Shetland, I swear, like for the population size it has, has an such an uh, out, you know, like yeah. the ratio of creative people living there is out of whack. Like there's just so many creative people there. So create the create the creative con- sorry, the contemporary crafts tour is instead of knitting it's just trying your hand at all these different crafts. Yeah. Um, like the glass fusing and and all of this and and whittling and all of these different things. So there's some spaces on that. There's a few spaces on the lace week. Right. Um the Fair Isle weeks are sold out. So if you're interested in that, um islandvista.co.uk. Right. I'm only going on the one this year, but Jolene, like we we got it down. Yeah. She's got it down. She's got great guides lined up to take people around. So highly recommend. We had such a blast on those trips. Fun. Really fun. Lovely. fun. Yeah. So so yeah. So that's a lot. We have a lot going on in the next it's a lot coming months. Yeah. And then I go back for Wool Week and then uh put the boxes together. And then we have Thanksgiving, and then we start our Woolly Winter Countdown. And then we have yeah. Cracklin' Oat Brand Countdown. <laughs> and if you don't know what we're talking about, just look back <laughs> to episode one from last year. Yeah. Yeah, or or just get to go enjoy it by going to the Christmas episode from last year. For That's when we actually bust out the box. <laughs> Crack I don't know. Brand. I don't know if I'll be doing that again. Like I mentioned to you, I'm off sugar. So I don't know if I want to. I know. Well, I am too, but that's Christmas is an exception day for me. So we'll see. We'll see. We how were, it, Anna and I were it. talking beforehand. It's only April. And I realized I've been doing this for nine years now. Being off sugar. Without sugar. Good. Yeah. But, but yeah, there are holidays. I still do it for Thanksgiving and Christmas. I didn't eat I didn't eat any sugar for Easter this year. I was just kind of like, eh. Mm. Didn't really appeal after, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. But Jana, you're new to it and you're doing really great with it, it sounds. Nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's hard that first few days while your body's burning through the leftover sugar in your system, it's rough. It's you know, you got a little yeah. withdrawal headache. You just need to drink a lot of water. It's okay. Yeah. Drink a lot of water, eat a lot of fat. Fat and protein will get you over the hump. Protein. And yeah. then and then you can move forward with you know doing your thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. have a lot, we have a lot going on. So we have a lot going on. I'm loving this. I'm sitting here with this on my lap and it's it's warm. It's kind of oh, really it looks so cool great. Bed. Guys, go make a bid. Go make a bid. A donation. Look at, I love Excuse me. I, sorry, you're right. A donation. I love how you arranged it because people can fold if they want to have it in their living room. Yeah, you, you know, can fold like they can ways. fold it one way or the other and have a different sort of tone mm-hmm. to it. And I did block all the squares first. Oh, look! See how I tried really hard to get the geometric patterns to Ooh, line up. This is this is. Nice. This is Actually, for a second, I was like, wait, is that off? But I think it's pretty close. So, but it's a fantastic pattern. It's called the Radvent Throw by Amba O'Brien. This is the second one of these I've made. Now I kind of want to make yeah. one PK or even worsted from the couch because oh, it's cold. a nice big one. Yeah, for sure. Do it. Oh, Do awesome. It. Like I don't have everything else. Oh, do you want to know what else I'd, I succumbed? I don't have it to show you because I mailed it off, but I'll put it on my Instagram. I knitted an emotional support chicken. I saw the picture. What is going on with these chickens? I somehow missed the boat on them and now they're just everywhere. What is going on with the chicken? Well, I had seen it and yes. I thought I kind of want to make one because it looks fun. I kind of want to make one. And then I was chatting with my sister and she was just having a little bit of a rough week. And I sent her a picture and I said, I think you need an emotional support chicken. Cause I knew it would make her laugh because she's the one that sends me like all the uh-huh. mu- all the Muppet memes and that kind of thing, you know. Dun 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 yeah. dun 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 dun. You remember? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I knew it would make her laugh. And then she's like, 
yes, yes, I would like one. And I, I'm like, wait, is she serious? So I didn't ask her if she was serious. I just, I had some like Plymouth worsted tweed, you know, and it, uh-huh. it had a bunch of it on hand. And so I started making an emotional support chicken and I just set aside everything, which is why I'm a little late getting this done. But, you know, my sister needed a chicken. So she needed a chicken. She received it yesterday and she said Yay. she'd had a rough couple of days and, and, and she was having this like migraine thing going on. So I'm glad she got the chicken. Her name is Henrietta. That's and she awesome. sent me a picture this morning of the chicken on her desk at work. Yay. Well timed, Jana. Well timed. And the chicken's like got her head tilted. She's doing a little side eye. It was funny. <laughs> There's our still for this episode, Jana. <laughs> Both do side eye. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <sighs> it's lovely to catch up with you. Yes, it's always good to talk to you. I have to go do homework now. I have to knit the so. border for this Afghan. I'm doing that today. Yeah, we both got work to do. Yeah, and I we have to be responsible. Going. I got a Netflix going, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that and knit the border. Yeah, I actually have an episode. I recorded it this morning. I woke up this morning at 4:30 and could not fall back to sleep. Oh, I hate that. So at five, I got up and recorded my episode. What is and it? And then by 6:15, I went back in bed. <laughs> So what are you watching? So now I just, I have to edit it. Uh, oh, so we're episode. talking about. Oh, oh you're, you're, I yeah, thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said Netflix. My episode. Like I recorded an episode. So I thought you meant an, a show. Oh no, you don't record Netflix. That's true. You're you just don't. there. That's time. right. That's right. No. Okay. Well, I just got so- up and did ridiculous early morning recording. So if I sound tired on this next episode, it's because I literally rolled out of bed. I was like, what am I going to do? There's nothing else to do. I'll record my episode. Yeah. Well, then I'll talk to you next month. That sounds great. I'll be abroad. So that'll be extra fun. Yay. See you later. Okay, people, go oh. reorder Ann's box because that's fun. And come yes, to Pearl please. Camp. Come to Pearl Camp. Yes. Bye.